Hi, I'm Marilyn San Clemente of Stamp with Marilyn, and welcome to my creative playground. Tonight, um, I'm going to show you some of the projects that we did last week at our all day event, and the tutorials will be going online this week. And then today, I'm going to show you how to do this really beautiful technique called Joseph's Coat. And uh, one of my downline, Ruth, um, came up with a little bit of a different spin on it, and um, I actually kind of like it. So it's not a technique that I was ever really that enamored with, and uh, she kind of did this little different spin on it, and um, I like the way it looks. So I am trying to bring you up on my laptop, make sure everything looks all right. Let's see, why does this always take so long to reboot? Or not reboot, but to refresh. There we go, all right, huh, I'm there. All right, okay, so um, let's get started and uh, hopefully I can get this turned around correctly. Okay, and one of my goals tonight is to make sure that everybody can see things and see what I'm doing because some of the things that I've been doing have been a little bit off camera. So, um, what I wanted to do tonight was, um, actually, I will put these aside for a moment. Those are the cards that I'm going to show you. Um, this is one of the classes that we did um, at our full day event last Saturday. And this is using the Magnolia Lane Memories and More kit with the, um, with the cards that fit with the um, Magnolia Lane Memories and More kit. And when you buy the package of cards that come with that kit, you receive 20 cards and then we split the kit in half and that gives you enough, um, enough Memories and More cards, designer cards, um, to make 20 cards. And so if you were to take a whole Memories of More kit, you could actually make 40 cards. Um, so you would need two of the um, pre-cut card bases to start. But, um, so what I wanted to show you, oops, shoot. Okay, there we go. Oh, I am. All right, I got it down. Okay, so what I wanted to show you was just show you a quick sample of the cards and I will be putting the tutorial for this online tomorrow. Um, so if you're interested, you can purchase the tutorial. And I also have a couple of kits um, available for this. And so that's card number two. I love this Magnolia Lane piece. That's number three. Number four. Number five, this one says sending love. And even if you were only going to make the 10 cards that we'll show you here um, and that are included in the tutorial, that leaves you enough memory and more cards left to um, put together a small scrapbook. Everyday moments. And these, these would be beautiful for a wedding. I would love to do a wedding album with this. That's a hello. And this is a happy birthday. <clears throat> so those are the 10 cards that we made with the Magnolia Memories and More kit. And um, as I mentioned, I will be posting that out on my website tomorrow. Now, in addition, my team and I have been working on some really pretty things with the mosaic designer paper. And I think you saw this card last week. If you didn't, you can watch my video from last week and I actually did turn it around so it's facing the right way now. Um, but I love this mosaic designer paper. And um, my team member Ruth designed this really cute little purse or carrying kit for this. 
So this would hold five or six cards with envelopes, so it would be a great gift for someone. Um, another person on my team, Lee. Okay. Hey, Em. How's life upstairs? Sally, so good to see you. And Linda, thanks for stopping back by again. Um, okay, I think that was because my phone rang. I have to figure out how to turn my phone off or how to turn the, I guess, the uh, ringer part off. So this is a card that I'm doing on Wednesday with my stamp club. So if any stamp club members are watching, then um, you'll see part of what you're working on. Okay. Um, so to move forward, what I was going to teach you was this a technique that's called Joseph's Coat. And what this technique is, is it's a resist. So um, a resist technique. And what's a little bit different from a typical resist technique is usually you stamp with Versamark on a piece of white card stock. And, um, and then all of your images that you've colored over will come out white. But with this particular technique, you make a colored card stock first, or you make a multicolored card stock. You pick your favorite colors or coordinating colors, and you make a multicolored card stock. And then you stamp your images with um, Versamark ink and emboss them so that they resist the ink. And then you use a darker ink um, to go over it and make this background. And one of the things that I didn't really like that much about Joseph's Code is when I, when I saw it, and this was going back years, um, all everybody was using black as the background. And I just didn't like the black background with the white design. But now that I've found that you can do it with colors, I really like this. So for this particular one, I used, let me grab my inks here. I used my favorite pink, and I, this one I wanted to make kind of a bright. I used my favorite Brights Pink, which is Flirty Flamingo. I used Granny Apple Green, and I used Mango Melody. Um, and you can see the colors here. This is the Flirty Flamingo. I didn't want to make a green daisy, um, so I, this is actually a crushed curry daisy, but this is the Mango Melody um, um, piece. And then what I did was I covered after I I did the, went through the technique, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I covered the whole piece of cardstock with mossy meadow, which is the dark, the darkest green that we have. And um, this is what we came out with. So I will keep that card right over here. And then this card, um, I love this. This is some of the new colors. And what I did for this was I took a piece of white cardstock. And I colored the cardstock background with Blushing Bride, So Saffron. And when I did this one, I actually used um, Mint Macaron. And what I did was I chose Rococo Rose because that's a dark rose as my background color. But I think the Mint Macaron was a little bit too dark and it shows through on the Rococo Rose. So what I'm going to do, what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to substitute the sea foam um, for the green, in place of that green. And we'll see how that comes out. So shall we get started? And these are actually the colors. These are the cardstock colors and this is kind of how I chose my colors is, um, okay, with this piece, as I mentioned, I used mint macaron, um, but I think that shows through too much with the Rococo Rose, or it makes the Rococo Rose darker than I wanted it to be. So um, we're gonna try it with the soft sea foam instead. And so then this is the Rococo Rose. And that's how I came up with my color combinations. And my color combinations for the other one, I took my three favorite brights colors which are the Flirty Flamingo, Granny Apple Green, and the Mango Melody, and put those together. And then I chose a dark green, which is the Mossy Meadow, to go over that. So with this, you, what you do, need to do is make sure that you're choosing your darker color actually fits with that color family. So Mossy Meadow looks good with the Granny Apple Green. Um, so you just wanna make sure that it ties into the colors that you're using for your card. Okay. So let's get started here.
And I cut a ex couple of extra pieces of white just in case. Because as I was doing this before, it took me a little while to get this going. Okay, so I'm going to put the Rococo Rose aside for now um, because we'll use that in a bit. And the first thing you're going to do is I used sponges and what I did was I took a sponge and I cut it up and I have a separate sponge for each color. So I'm going to start with the So Saffron and the Blushing Bride and then the mint, or I'm sorry, so um, soft sea foam. Oops, and I just mixed up my, okay, there we go. And um, so the So Saffron, let's start with that because that's a lighter, it's usually better off, you're better off starting with a lighter color on some of these um, because then you, you can go back over and you can pull it and darker colors will blend in with the lighter color. So what I'm doing is I'm just tapping my, if you can see, I'm tapping my, um, sponge on the ink pad and I'm just gonna dab it there and then I'm just gonna make a little circle you can hear it's kind of squeaking which it wasn't doing earlier so that's kind of interesting okay Okay, so there's our yellow, and we may go back and change that a little bit. And then this is my, this is the Blushing Bride. And what I found with Blushing Bride is, okay, so I'm tapping this, and then I'm just tapping it over here, is at the beginning, it's a little bit darker, and it almost has a brown tint to it. So that's why I'm tapping over here first, so I don't want it to be quite as dark. I want to keep it lighter, because I'm working with a pastel type, a pastel idea. Okay, and I think what I need to do is add a little bit more yellow here. We, of course, we haven't done the green yet, but um, it looks like the yellow is looking a little sparse. So I'm just gonna add more. I'll add a little bit there, and a little bit here. And then what I'm going to do is with the mint, I'll do the same thing and I'm gonna fill in the rest. I'm sorry, this isn't mint. Mint is the color that I I retired from this project because I thought it was too dark. This is the soft sea foam. So this is the lightest green. And actually this looks nice. I like this. I like this color combination. Get a little bit of green down on the bottom here. Fill in Okay. Okay, so I have my piece and it's all colored. And what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna use my heat gun and I'm just gonna go over it to make sure that my ink is dry um, because next we're going to stamp and then use clear embossing powder. And I don't want the clear embossing powder to stick to the wet ink. I want the clear embossing powder to stink to stick to the stamped images, but not my wet ink. So I'm going to use my heat gun and just go over this. next step is to use the embossing body and this will take off again um, this will help make sure um, that there's nothing that the embossing powder is going to stick to other than um, where we're stamping with the Versamark okay so now what I'm going to do is I have my Versamark pad here so I'm going to use that, and as you can tell, mine is a very well-used pad. And it actually 
doesn't matter if your pad gets stained. It will get stained because it's Versamark and it's clear ink. So it will get stained as you use it, but I just keep re-inking it and it's fine. And the colors really don't come off. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp with the Little Daisy from the Daisy Lane stamp set. And I'm just gonna randomly stamp Okay, and then I'm going to emboss that. So I have my embossing powder. And I have a lot of emboss. I usually don't have this much embossing powder in my tray, but I did tonight. Um, just because I'm working on this project. Ugh. And now it's kind of, feels like sand to me. But maybe that's because I'm close to the beach. So now I'm going to emboss these, heat emboss these. So you heat this until you see your image turning clear. And when you stamp this, because you're stamping with Versamark, you really can't see where you stamped until you put the embossing powder on it. So sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge and after you do the heat embossing, you'll want to go back and actually stamp some more images. Or not, it's up to you. Um, this is your card, so make it the way you like. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to stamp a couple more daisies. Um, it looks like I could use something here maybe and one more down here. And then I'm going to take the other daisy that's in that set, that's the closed daisy, and I'm going to stamp that in between. So really what we're doing is we're making our own background paper with this. Okay, and did I stamp? Nope, I didn't get that. Need something there, and I need something in this corner. Here we go. Okay, so now again, I'm going to put that in the embossing powder. Okay, and then I'm going to heat that. And as, as I'm heating, I like to stay about an inch and a half to two inches above my image. And I like to move the heat gun around so that it's not focused on any one spot. Because if you're, depending upon the type of paper that you're working with, especially if you're working with vellum, you can burn vellum or melt vellum. So I just like to move it around and kind of watch, oops, watch the piece that I'm doing. Okay, whoops, and I forgot, I added a daisy there, so I need to keep that one, and that one. Okay, so now, I don't, if you can see that, um, you can see I've got the different daisies stamped and um, ready to go. Okay, and now what I'm going to do, the next step is to take your darker color and to go over, cover this whole thing with the darker color. So we're going to use Rococo Rose. And again, I'm just gonna dab it. I have a sponge and I'm just going to go over the whole thing with Rococo Rose. And so some of those background colors are gonna go away Actually, all the background colors should go away. Yeah.
And I think that um, using the um, soft sea foam does work better because the greens aren't quite as vibrant. So the, the Rococo Rose is covering up the green so that you can, um, you see that the Rococo Rose is the background and not a green blob. <laughs> there we go. So you just keep going over this until you get it is dark, the background is dark as you want it. So if you try this technique, I would love to see what you all make with it. Take a picture of your card and um, put it on my Facebook page. And uh, show, me, show me what you make with this, because I I do really like this. Okay, so there's my there's my card. And I can tell I kind of rock my stamp a little bit because I've got a stray piece here and right here. But um, we can cover those up. So now what I have done is I have my background piece of Rococo Rose. So I'm going to fold that in half to make my card base. And then I have a piece of So Saffron, and then I will mount this onto the So Saffron. So when I'm um, adding layers to a card, I like to start with the left side and move over, but don't put it all down until I make sure that I've got it layered because otherwise, when you get it down, then you can't pull it back up. Okay. There we go. So we've got that evenly lined lined up. Okay, I can put that away. I can put that away. Move those out of my way. Okay, so the next piece that I did was um, I made my flowers. So, um, and just to go back a little bit, I think I do like that so, so, bleh, the soft sea foam because it's not quite as green um, and it, I really couldn't cover up this green with the Rococo Rose, so it kind of looks a little bit funny. But I like the soft sea foam because I think that looks a little bit a little bit better. So what I have done is I have made a bunch of daisies. I've used both the large daisy from this stamp set and the small daisy. And I have stamped those on the different colors of cardstock that I'm using. So tonight for this, I was using Blushing Bride which is this, and I was using the Rococo Rose, and then I used the So Saffron, and I did not, um, I didn't stamp any daisies with the soft sea foam because I, for some reason, green daisies just don't look right to me. <laughs> but what I did was I took the Rococo Rose and the Blushing Bride because those are two shades of pink, and I, I kind of mixed them up a little bit. So I have one daisy that has a, Rococo Rose background with um, the Blushing Bride in the middle. And then this other daisy that I haven't put together yet, I'm going to have the Blushing Bride background with the Rococo Rose in the middle on the top. So to do this project, um, when you're working with these daisies, you need, um, if you're doing the daisies the way I'm doing them, I need two large daisies and two small daisies for each one daisy. So. Um, I suggest you have on hand a fresh roll of glue dots because what you want to do is stick your glue dot and then I lined this up. There we go. So the petals kind of line up and then I'm going to put a glue dot here and line that up. And then there's the 
there's my daisy. So I have one that's Blushing Bride with a Rococo Rose in the middle, another one that's Rococo Rose with the Blushing Bride in the middle, and then I have a third daisy that's the yellow. So now I'm going to attach those to the card. Oops, I wanna do the yellow last, sorry. Okay. I'm gonna put the pink over there. And I will put the darker pink next to it. And then for the yellow, I wanna make that one pop out a little bit. So I'm going to use um, a dimensional for that. And I'll put that on the bottom. And then what I was thinking for this card was it would be nice to take a little, to make like a little tail here and put your um, greeting on it, or you could put it down on the bottom. So I was thinking of making a little, oh, maybe not the yellow, because that's not going to stand out enough. Um, probably a piece of white, just take a white strip and make a little tail. So I'm just going to cut a piece that's three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to take the word friend or smile. Actually, I'll do smile. I really like this set. I like the sentiments that are in it. It has smile, friend, the best moments in my life happen with you, and it's your time to shine. And this is a beautiful set. It's the New Daisy Lane set. So I'm going to stamp, since Rococo Rose is my darker color, I'll stamp my sentiment with that. There we go. And then I'm going to use my scissors and I will cut the end for, to make a little tag. And I just eyeball it. And then cut this end here. And I have some thread hanging off my scissors. Okay, so then what I would do is potentially, let's see, how could we could do that? Or maybe we put it up this way. So if we have it like that, so that it is kind of coming out of the daisies, I like that. So I'm just gonna put just a little bit of adhesive on that and bury the bottom in the daisies, and then it will come out like that. I like that. Now, um, what I'm going to do, I love these faceted gems, and I actually, um, because I've been working with the daisy set for the past week and a half with my team, um, I have been using a lot of these gems. <laughs> and um, there's gold gems, which look good with the daisies, and there's the um, the silver, or, or clear, I guess, silver, clear, um, I'm not sure what they're called in the catalog, if they're called clear or silver. But, um, so let's put those on. I'll show you what those look like. And these are actually perfect for the center of the flower because the facet on it looks just like the center of a flower. But the other thing that's really cool about these gems, especially if you're using the silver ones or the clear ones, is if you take your alcohol markers, your blend, or you can use a Sharpie, and you can actually color them so you can get a different color. So you can get, you know, so if you wanted a true yellow, um, this is the crushed curry um, blends. Um, you can make a true yellow. So that's one of my tips today. And you can do that, you can actually do that with any of our embellishments. You can do that with the rhinestones and you can do that with the pearls as well. You can use either a blends marker or a Sharpie. So there's my project for today using the Joseph's coat. Here's our three cards. And this one used the um, Flirty Flamingo, Crushed Curry, and um, the Mango Melody. And then Granny Apple Green was, in, was one of the colors that was used in the card, or in the background card, the background piece of the card. So that's it. So, um, Thank you for stopping by tonight. 
And if you haven't, sign up for my mailing list because you'll learn about specials, you'll, you'll see classes that I'm coming out with, um, classes that I'm teaching. And if you're not in the Boston area, that's okay. Um, I am putting PDFs out on my site. And if you are a demo, I have no problem if you want to purchase the PDF, um, use that class for your customers. I know these are classes my customers like, so probably your customers will like them too. Um, so that's fine. And again, thanks for stopping by. Um, to sign up for my mailing list, you can go out to stampwithmarilyn.com and a little box will pop up and you can sign up for my mailing list. And if you are in the US and you need to purchase supplies and don't have a demo, um, feel free. If you use the June host code, RU7TGHBY, I will give you a sampler of the magnolia paper and the um, trim that goes with it. So thanks again, and I will see you all next week. Take care.